Starfield ship combat is a great part of the game. It is a great way to earn XP, get extra loot, and just pass a load of time. Fighting the Crimson Fleet or pirates and boarding other ships, stealing other ships, there is loads you can do. You get a decent amount of XP just through the combat alone, loads of credits by looting, commandeering enemy ships and selling them on, or breaking them down for use in your own ships. Customization is also a massive part of this, which stealing enemy ships to break down to put parts into your ships is going to be vital towards the later stages of the game. We will go into ship customization in another video, but for today we're going to go over mainly the combat aspect. Now there are many ways that you can improve your skills as a fighter pilot. Now for you to master ship combat, especially with a low level ship like the Frontier, one way that you can really do that is by investing in the right skills. Now if you go into your skills and head over to the right hand side, you will come across the tech tree. Now the tech tree, there's loads of different options in there, from weapon systems, shields, all the way up to cargo. There's loads of stuff in there that will really, really help you, and depending on your playstyle, will depend on what skills you want to use. If you are a big fan of using the plasma weapons or the laser weapons, then you want to invest in those skills. If you like using the missiles and the ballistic weapons more, then you want to invest in those instead. Or if you want to mix it up and use all of them, you will need more skill points obviously, but you can do that too. Now you can go into the science skill tree as well, and there is a skill in there which will help you grab jump further. Not really needed in combat, but it is part of the ships. And then if you go into social, there is another skill in there which will help your smuggling capabilities. It will increase your chances of being able to smuggle items across borders and get them into the higher level planets like the Free Star, Alpha Centauri, Neon, places like that. Or you could just go to the Wolf's Den, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Now, ship services is something that is very, very important. You can use your ship services, there are several of them dotted all over the major landing pads and what these guys can do is upgrade your ships, repair your ships and even sell you components. So if you go into these guys, what you'll be able to do is pay the thousand credits and they will repair your ship if you don't have the ship repair parts. Um, or you can do it anyway and just spend the thousand. It all depends on how tight you are for cash. Now they can also be used to upgrade your current ship. So you can upgrade various systems as you can see here. We've got weapons one, two, three, and then we can upgrade the engines and stuff like that as well. We can't upgrade the shields, but there are other things that we can do. Now with certain ships that you have, you can upgrade shields and you can upgrade different things depending on that ship. So if you do upgrade things to the best of the ability that you've got, that will obviously help. You can also buy ships from these guys as well. They pretty much act as vendors, but just for the ship aspect. They are a great, great tool to have. Just head into those guys when you've got a decent amount of cash and you can buy a pretty decent ship. The Frontier is a relatively good starting ship. I will have a guide on how to make it a better starting ship. That should be coming out in the next couple of days. The most important thing about your ship whilst flying is the ship systems. Now, if you look here in your bottom left hand corner, you have the ship systems with the light blue bars on them and those dark blue bars are empty. So you can see that you can allocate certain points to different parts of your ship. So what this means is if you are just flying around, you can allocate more points into your engine systems. Or if you want to grab jump further, you'll allocate points into your grab jump. You can have more points to allocate if you get a better reactor, but so far I am quite a few hours in, uh, around about 30, and I haven't needed to upgrade anything like that, I've just found a different ship. If you do want a ship that I'm using, it is called the Razor Leaf. I have a video uh, which is in the cards up top, and I'll put it in the description down below too, and that shows you how to get that very early on in the game. It is a great starting ship. but. You need to allocate these points depending on what situation you have at hand. So let's say, for example, you are going into uh, combat. I'd recommend, depending on your playstyle, once again, dropping down these points on your grav drive all the way down to zero. You don't need a grav drive when you're in combat. What you can do is increase the points on either your laser weapons or your missiles or your plasma weapons, depending on which one you use the most. Now it is important to take note that laser and plasma weapons are the best against shields whereas ballistic weapons like missiles are the best against actual hull damage. 
So it is good to have a nice mix of these weapon systems rather than just focusing all on one. You can do that if you want, but you will have better results if you do have varied weapon systems. So when combat does get a little bit hairy, you can drop down your systems from your engine and your grav drive. I would not recommend dropping the engine all the way down because that will leave you dead in the water. But what you can do is drop them down just a couple of points and make sure your shield is maxed because your shield is very important and you can get taken out pretty damn quickly. I'd say ship combat is definitely a lot harder and the enemy pilots are a lot more versatile and they focus a little bit more on outmaneuvering you so they can get behind you and focus on your critical systems just like you can take down their systems they can take down yours so i would recommend practicing with your ship a little bit when it comes to the maneuverability so you want to fly as fast as you can uh, whilst in combat then that's how you want to play it that's great but I'd recommend a sort of medium speed and then if you want to do some nice quick turns to evade missiles drop that speed all the way down and then fling it as much as you can just to try and evade all of those missile systems. But when you are in that combat situation it is a little bit harder to focus on flying, shooting, changing weapon systems so try and anticipate going into that fight and get the weapon systems ready before you're there. Like I say, if you are taking down an enemy's shields, focus on those laser points. And if you are quick enough, you can drop points out of laser when their shields are down and put them into missiles and then destroy their actual hull itself. One thing to take note of when it does come to missiles is that you are better using them when they've got a lock on. So if the enemy is all over the place or you can't aim on them just right, then you won't really be able to use those missiles. It will work if you are up close, you can just fire the missile directly at them. Um, but if they're a little bit further away, you need to make sure you're targeting them. As you can see, there's a little bar at the bottom, um, which will tell you your targeting progress. Once that is at 100% and your reticle turns red, you are locked on and you can fire missiles at the target. You can do them with their shields up, they still do damage against the shields, but lasers, plasma weapons are much better. Now, whilst you're in combat, you will occasionally get your ship absolutely shot the shite out of, and there is a way that you can fix it. Whilst in combat, there is one way. You will find these items called ship parts. Now, they weigh a hell of a ton, so make sure you don't have them on you. They will be in your aid section on your inventory. And now, put these items in your ship's cargo hold. You cannot use them to heal your ship unless they are in your ship's cargo hold. If they are on your person, it will not work. Make sure you are not in the scanning mode as well, because if you are in the scanning mode, you'll just end up taking screenshots and it's very, very annoying. So make sure you're not in the scanning mode and keep that. <clears throat> and keep those ship healing parts in mind. They do weigh a hell of a lot, which is the downside of them. And but they are quite useful, especially when you're going against multiple enemies. You can sort of fly around a little bit, try and avoid the firefight, let your shields regenerate. If they do come all the way down without taking fire for a few minutes, a few seconds, they will regenerate back up. And whilst they're doing that, you can continually heal yourself if you have the repair parts there. To improve your shield's capacity, um, regeneration speed, make sure you've got those shield points maxed out. I always keep mine maxed out just because you never know what you're going to encounter and having the shield up and running gives you that little bit extra time to sort of allocate weapons to what you want to allocate them to. Now another way that you can finish off enemy ships is through their... <clears throat> another way that you can combat enemy ships is through their targeting system. There is a very detailed targeting system which will allow you to actually attack specific parts of a ship. Now this targeting system is very very useful and you will need to use it to disable ships if you do want to dock them. So as you can see here we are focused in on that ship and just like your selection they have exactly the same. They've got their weapons, um, their shields, their engines, their grav drive. Now if you target the engines of any ship this will bring them down providing you've not already done too much damage. If you've done too much damage they've only got a little bit left then you'll end up destroying them completely. So if you try and target the engines as soon as possible, especially if you know you want to commandeer the ship. 
once you targeted those engines or those shield systems, depending on which one or what your outcome that you want is. Like I say, you target the weapon systems, they'll have no weapons to shoot you. Target the engine, they'll be dead in the water. Target the shield and they won't be able to regenerate it. But targeting the engines is great and crucial for commandeering ships and earning yourself a shite ton of extra credits. When you target these ships and um, their engines, you will end up leaving them dead in the water. And then just like any other system, like the, uh, the wolf's den or the eye, you can actually dock these ships. Once you've docked them, all you've got to do is head on inside, take out everybody that is in there, and everything that is inside that ship is yours for the taking. Take it all away, load up with loot, and then if you've got a high enough pilot's level, you can actually take the ship for yourself. If you do take the ship for yourself and take it back home, you will have to register the ship, which can cost quite a big chunk of cash. It all depends on the actual um, ship itself and how much the ship is worth. So do bear that in mind. If you are running low on cash, I wouldn't recommend commandeering them. You can take them home and just leave them in your hangar, but then you can't use them as a sort of daily ship. Uh, you will need to revert back to your older ship. When you are looting enemy ships, you may also come across contraband. Now, contraband is one of the main reasons you want to be commandeering enemy ships in space, because this stuff goes for quite a big chunk of money. Now, there is only one place you can get rid of this, unless you've upgraded your ship's systems and your cargo systems to a shielded cargo hold because that shielded cargo hold gives you a better chance of getting past those scanner systems on the higher area planets. So Alpha Centauri, the Free Star Collective planets, Neon, stuff like that. Uh, when you do get scanned, if you have contraband, they'll take it away from you and then they'll lock you up. Whereas if you have a shielded cargo hold, you can then get through and sell your contraband cargo. If you don't want to invest in that, you can travel to this location here. Now this is the wolf system and inside there is called the den. When you head into the den, all you've got to do is run straight through and then turn left. And there is the person that will buy all of your contraband items. Great way to make a decent amount of cash just from the ship combat itself. Then all you've got to do is, if he runs out of money, just sit down at a bench for two in-game days that will restock his cash. Because you can't really sell contraband in uh, in the major cities and, and most of the places that you'll be going to because obviously well it's contraband now another thing to keep in mind when it comes to your ship is your crew there are a lot of crew members out there and if you look at their bonuses and their stats there are certain ones that will really help you and give you that edge when it comes to ship combat ship flight and everything revolving around your ship just like they help with the habitats they will help you with the ship too this channel will be home for all things Starfield, mods, gameplay, news, DLCs, all of that good stuff. For now, we're going to wrap that one up there, though. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed. Once again, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I've been Cowboy. You've been awesome. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.